Good evening. The nation this morning woke up to some really terrible news. A group of migrants trying to get home on a train track for some reason, going to sleep on their train track, perhaps because they couldn't find any other place to sleep. And then a goods train comes along, more than a dozen of them dead. These pictures that we've been seeing now for more than a month are really images that should sear all of our conscience and make us think a little bit. Was this really necessary? These, these stories of tragedy that we've been hearing, people trapped far away from their homes, far away from their families, somehow trying to get home, walking for miles, hitching rides, trying to go inside cement mixers, and then in cases like this, walking on a train track. Now look, I know what will be said. There was no other choice. The migrants should have stayed where they were. They will be spreading the disease. They will bring that disease back. We've had the Orissa High Court today saying that only allow those people in uh, who are migrants from the state if they test negative. But I think somewhere in all of this, there is a, a human feeling that we need to have for our fellow citizens. Uh, and that's why these images are images that should really shock all of us and sear our conscience. I saw this, I saw this tweet today which, which brought, literally brought tears to my eyes. It said, they waited and waited for a train to take them home. And below that, the image of what was left on that train track today. I'm, I'm going to lead with that story and we'll talk about coronavirus cases and deaths and the rest of it. But I think it is really incumbent on all the governments that we had at the central level and at the state level to try and find an answer as quickly as we can. How do we make sure that these migrant workers are taken care of? How do we make sure that pictures like this are not repeated again? 16 migrant workers were killed after they were run over by a goods train in Maharashtra's Aurangabad district on Friday, police said. The workers were walking back to their homes in Madhya Pradesh, news agency PTI has reported. They'd been walking along the rail tracks and slept on the tracks due to exhaustion, an official said. They were mowed down by the train at 5.15 a.m. injured. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said he was extremely anguished at the death of the migrant workers who were run over by a goods train in Maharashtra's Aurangabad. The Prime Minister tweeted that he spoke to the Railway Minister Piyush Koyal, who is closely monitoring the situation. The migrants were sleeping on the tracks when the train hit them around 5.15 a.m. The driver spotted them and tried to stop but could not, the Railway's Ministry said in a statement. One of the survivors of the Aurangabad train accident on Friday said the group of migrant workers had applied for e-transit passes a week ago but decided to walk towards their home state after not receiving any response from authorities. A News 18 report quoted Dhirendra Singh, one of the three survivors, from Umaria district in MP. Singh said they had pending work and family back home and so were unable to wait any longer for transit passes to reach Madhya Pradesh. Dhirendra survived the accident as he was walking at a distance from the rest of the group, which sat down on the rail tracks to rest and then fell asleep. The Orissa High Court on Thursday said only those migrants who tested negative for COVID-19 should be allowed into the state. The order forced the state government to immediately cancel permission given to other states, including Gujarat, to transport stranded labourers by train. The order is expected to disrupt return of thousands of migrants, some of whom are on their way to the state. Five trains that were to leave from Friday with migrant workers from Surat to Orisha have been cancelled. In its daily media briefing, the Health Ministry said that in the last 24 hours, there were 3,390 new COVID-19 positive cases and 1,273 recoveries in India. The recovery percentage has improved to 29.36%. Till now, about 16,540 patients have been cured and 37,916 patients are under active medical supervision. In 216 districts in the country, no positive cases of COVID-19 have been detected and in 46 districts, no new cases have been detected in the last seven days. If we the required do's and don'ts, ka palan karenge, required processes in terms of clinical management usko follow karenge to ho sakta hai ki hum peak ko achieve na kare hamara curve isi tarah se flatten rahe the death toll due to covid-19 crossed 1886 and the number of cases surged to 56342 in the country on friday recording an increase of 103 deaths and 3390 cases in the last 24 hours according to the union health ministry 
Of the total fresh cases reported, 78 are from four states – Delhi, Gujarat, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. A further breakup reveals that 53% of the new cases are from the two states of Maharashtra and Gujarat. A staggering 36% of the new cases are from Maharashtra alone. Of the total deaths, 70% of the deaths are reported from Maharashtra and Gujarat. India has launched its biggest repatriation mission to bring back Indians stranded abroad due to the coronavirus lockdown. On Friday, an Air India flight has brought back 234 Indians from Singapore, while the INS Jalashwa is bringing back Indian nationals from Maldives. In the first two flights of the Vande Bharat mission, 363 Indians who were stranded in the UAE were brought back on Air India flights that landed in Kerala. 168 Indian students stranded in Bangladesh also returned home. The Drug Controller General of India has approved clinical trials of Favpiravir for the treatment of COVID-19 patients. Favpiravir is a phytopharmaceutical, it comes from a plant extract and the end-to-end -end synthesis of the drug has been completed by the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Favpiravir has demonstrated good results against influenza viruses and is being tested in other countries as a potential treatment against the novel coronavirus including in China, Japan, Russia and the Middle East. The National Green Tribunal has slapped an interim penalty of 50 crore rupees on LG Polymers India and sought a response from the centre and others on Friday in the gas leak incident in Vishakhapatnam. The Green Court said there appears to be a failure to comply with the rules and other statutory provisions. A bench headed by NGT Chairperson Justice Adarsh Kumar Goel set up a five-member committee to probe Thursday's gas leak incident in the chemical factory in which 11 people were killed and over 1,000 exposed. The NGT also issued notices to the Ministry of Environment, LG Polymers India, Andhra Pradesh State Pollution Control Board, the Central Pollution Control Board, the Vishakhapatnam District Magistrate and sought their response before the 18th of May, the next date of hearing. Moody's Investor Service on Friday said it estimates India's GDP growth to hit zero in financial year 2021. It also pointed to a wide fiscal deficit, high government debt, weak social and physical infrastructure and a fragile financial sector. However, the agency estimated the GDP to grow by 6.6% in financial year 2022. Moody's warned that the COVID-19 shock will exacerbate an already material slowdown in economic growth.